Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Bria Fontino and I'm here with my father, the legendary Sean Solo Fontino, better known as Franklin from the popular game series Grand Theft Auto V. I thought we was trying to get out of this bullshit. You sounded more and more like a snee eye itch every day. I sound like somebody trying to make some paper and not get key. What similarities do you see between yourself and your character, Franklin? <laughs> I get that question a lot. Like, before Franklin, I played a character um, named Mo, who my boy DJ Pooh. What's up, Pooh? Um, he gave me. Um, a role as a guy named Big Mo in a prison in a movie called Three Strikes. And then he turned around and gave me another role of a guy named Face in The Watch. Hey, cut the chit chat and tell him how much we want. Wait, hold on. How much we want? 50 Cent, fool. With Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Exhibit, um, Eminem, a, a host of people, big cast of people, man. Um, and then he turned around and made me come and be the lead, one of the lead characters in Grand Theft Auto V, which is Franklin. So when it got to Franklin, it was like I didn't have to change up. I could still be me, what I grew up as in the streets, in the hood. That's all I had knew, you know, from the projects to the, to, the, to the houses, to the east side, to the west side. So it was easy for me to, to, to form into Franklin and be that character because 90 some percent of the stuff you see him do in the game, I've done it or I've tried it. The strip club stuff, the, the, the trying to sell drugs, I've tried it. The gang banging, I did it. Um, I know what it feels like to be on both sides of the gun. I, I have shot at people and I've been shot, you know, so I know. I understand what it's, what it's like in the video game. So it was real easy for me to play that character because we had a lot, you know, in connection with each other. It was like I was looking at myself in the mirror when I when they was giving me the script to like, man, reading and stuff like, dang, Franklin did that. I, I remember I did something like that. So it was easy for me to act that role out. So it wasn't too hard. You know, Franklin is, is solo and solo is Franklin, you know, so pretty much sums it up with me and that dude. You see him back there. With the influence of social media, because it's everywhere, it's the biggest thing right now. Yeah. And all of the new talent, or you probably think talent less people that we have. What would be your advice for people that are trying to get in the entertainment industry? Hmm. Just do it, man. I mean, if this is what you want to do, just, just do it. But don't put your everything into it. If you're going to plant a garden, don't just plant all tomatoes. You know, plant some potatoes, some some onions, you know, some, some vegetables and stuff. Don't just go knee deep into the, the, the entertainment. Use that as something that you're just saying, I'm going to do it and I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to work hard at it. If it hit, it hit, then I can stop other things and be thankful for it and move on. But if it don't hit, you still got something to fall back on. So, you know, have your job, have you... A, a source of income coming in. With social media going on, people are just diving in. You know, I could say a lot of names that social media done made, but I chose not to, but a social media done made a lot of people famous that went up with zero, zero talent. Zero, I'm talking about, and it's cool. Don't get me wrong, I love seeing people do good. The more more people do good, the less, the less people do bad. When people are making some type of monetary, some type of money, some type of life for themselves and helping their friends mm -hmm. and their family, then it stops their family and their friends from doing bad. So it's cool, but get these guys and these women and these these people that got good talent in mind that that's blessed with these talents to 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 blossom. In the times we live in now, if you ain't almost willing to sell your soul or start sticking your finger in your nose and eating boogers or Bruh. doing something crazy, you, you might not get it, man. And it's just, it's facts, you know? But don't get me wrong, true talent sometimes stands out. You can't, you can't, you ain't gonna shut down true talent, but if they can't, if the world and the people can't see you, hear you, or experience you, they gonna look right over you. 
every day. And then not to like knock anyone's hustle. I mean, cause you, we all want to provide for our families, but if you make it, just make sure you pay it forward and expose yeah. the people that have that talent. Okay. It's like I won the lottery of video games. Now my name, I'm like immortalized now. You know, if I live to be a hundred years old, when I pass, that character is gonna live forever and my name is gonna be tied to it. Forever and ever. That's that's like a legend in the video game. Your world. name, your face, my face, your voice. my voice, my everything. That's where you can always hear me. They even got the tattoo. Yeah. That's Every like that's it. like Snoop. You know, Snoop is when when you do something like that, you you are immortalized now. That's what pure immortalizing means. It means that in this world we live in now, you did something and you left your, your stamp on this world that's gonna live on forever. So uh, I'm thankful I did that, you know? I, I wanna say I got lucky. I can say I got blessed, you know? I got something and I'm thankful for it. I know that you hate talking about it, but I just wanna give you a chance to clear the air and Say what you want about it, about the Ice Cube mm -hmm. situation. LA artists Cam and Solo were also in the middle of a business feud with Ice Cube. Well, a lot of interviewers that I have dealt with, mm -hmm. they focused on that. And they didn't care whether I bashed it or I, I tried to keep it going because you gotta remember a lot of people, they, they, they strive off of controversy and they build off a of controversy. So with you being my daughter, you know, this is like a first for me to really look in the camera and look at you and be honest with you, you know, that I, I hated what I did with you. I hated it. It was like one of the bis biggest mistakes I think I made, one of them in my life, was that I got caught up into this rap game, this, this clique, this riding for my boy, you know what I'm saying? And people know who I'm saying when I say my boy, you know, Cam. You know, Cam, he's like my brother, he's like my cousin. He, he's family, you know what I'm saying? So that's what families do. You know, I, I roll with him, you know? Yeah, I knew Q too. I knew Q just about as much as I knew Cam. Probably, I think I knew Q a little longer than I knew Cam. I met Cam through uh, a good, good friend slash cousin of mine named uh, Layback, Steve. And um, Cam was, you know, a good dude, a hell of a rapper. So, you know, I got behind him along with me and my, a few of my boys, you know, Mo Like and Jess and, you know, Lil D and all of us and stuff, Big Donnie, rest in peace. Um, we got behind Cam. so. When the Q situation came, you know, Q just, I used to sit on the porch with him and I used to always brag about Cam, Cam this, man, Cam is hard, man, you gotta put him on, man, you gotta listen to him. So Q that told me he was finna do a new deal, um, he didn't pretty much, tell, he told me it was street knowledge, but I didn't understand what he was going at, but he was finna shake away and start his own stuff and he'd give Cam a listen, you know what I'm saying? And at that time, you know, I was like, man, I need to try to be a rapper, you know what I'm saying? But I was into the streets too much to be a rapper, so you know I kind of stayed in the back and pushed Cam to him. And Q kept to his word. When he got on and he did his stuff, and he pulled me and Cam and invited us to his, his new studio he had over here in South in South Central. And um, he gave Cam a shot, man. He gave him a contract. And I was at that time like, where my contract at, man? I need a contract. You know, I want to rap, and I, I I wanted to be in front of the camera at the time. You know, when you a street dude. Street dudes always want to be in the shoes of a rapper, a basketball player, a sports player. Sports players that never was in the streets but grew up around the street, <clears throat> they always wanted to be back into the streets. So that's why you catch a lot of basketball players and football players getting into a lot of stuff. You know, they, they, they get this fame, they get all this money, these rappers, and then they go back to the streets to try to prove something because they want to come back to the streets because they got money and they got dudes that's, that's, that's telling them that, yeah, you from my hood. So them are the big mistakes that we made, you know what I'm saying? So Q did, he put me on a lot of stuff back then, man. And I hate that, you know, a lot of people always asking the question about me and Q. We had a fight, we had a misunderstanding, but I wanted to get on here with you and say, 
that, you know, Cube is my boy. I love him, man, like a brother. We was always tight, always, and he know this. And we, we still cool with each other to this day. Uh, for you and only you, I'm saying I'm gonna get Cube one day, and then me, you, and Cube gonna sit down, and you gonna watch us hug it out, you gonna watch us iron it out, and you gonna watch me apologize to him because I owe him that, and he deserved it, you know, because I talked about this so much that it's like I'm still punching on him. And why am I still punching on this man in these interviews and stuff? Is it because I'm trying to think I'm gonna get something from this? This is 20 something year old. Ain't nobody paying me a dime for these interviews to keep saying I did something to this guy. I, I put pain to this guy and his family. Because after this interview with you, I would I promise you, and I'm I'm putting my hand on my on my rest and soul of my mother and my grandmother, I would not talk about it no more. You the only one getting this, and that's why I say I'm gonna apologize to him on this camera. Cube, I apologize, brother. You know, I love you. We go way back, dog, and um, you know, we ironed our stuff out, but you know, we good, man. I ain't asking for nothing, I ain't looking for nothing. You know, you run with my boy Kibo. Kibo is my dude, man, real good dude, man, hood dude. And um, we good, man. So I'm saying it to you, Brit, to the camera, to the fans. I apologize to my dude, man. The growth, the growth. <laughs> so with that, if an opportunity arises in the future, would you work with him? Oh, most definitely, <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. We kind of old now, but yeah, you know, he got some things that he's Y'all doing that I'm kind of yeah, yeah. We got some, he got some things that he's doing right now. I can't speak on it because I don't know how they are with you know what they got going on. He know what I'm talking about, and a few other people know, but. If the opportunity arises and I get a phone call, I'm going to run to it. I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to drive. I'm not going to creep. I'm not going to crawl. I'm going to run to it because I would love to just be in the presence of my dude again. And we ironing the things out and we moving on. Who would you say was your role model? Hmm. If you had any. Role models, if you want the truth of role models, they was the streets. You know, it was the guys that I looked up to, you know, like my uncles, you know my grandfather, you know, it was anybody that was older that was, I could physically see. I couldn't go on and have a role model that I didn't know. I just wasn't one of them type of dudes that just like, oh wow, man, Martin Luther King, he was blah, 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 blah. I didn't know him. I knew of his work and don't get me wrong, man, I'm thankful that he fought for our rights, you know what I'm saying? But as far as role models, all I knew was my uncles, my grandfather, my, my grandmother, she was like a big role model for me, man. My grandmother, she was like, she was everything all balled up in a, like in a bag, man. It was just perfect. It was like a perfect sculpture because she just dealt with so many people. She had three sons, grandsons, and one daughter and a crazy husband. And that little old lady, she managed to deal with all of us, you know what I'm saying? And if you don't pick, like, look at her as a role model or icon, you got to be crazy. And we all have, and I'm saying this to the camera, we all have um, a grandmother that stayed down, nourished you, protect you, love you unconditionally. And we have moms like that, too. But it's something about that big mama, man. We love our mothers and everything unconditionally. But that big mama, man, it just it's a special thing. So. My grandmother was really my role. So, you talked about moving on and growth. Going back to your life in the streets, can you give me an example or an, an experience that you had that changed you, that made you want to do better and leave the streets alone? Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I always talk about it. And I owe that credit to, you know, to, to my wife, man. You know, getting with her. She gave me an ultimatum, man. I never ever forget this. She gave me an ultimatum that, you know, either you 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 buckle down in this relationship and start this family and move forward or you move on. And she was really serious that she was gonna move on. So I think that was my turning point to being a family man that changed me was she wrote me a letter and she checked me where I stood at and True love, you know, it, it, if you love somebody, you're gonna respect their, the, your partner's wishes. And she didn't ask for much, she just asked that we we make this a serious commitment, you know what I'm saying? She didn't like 
like right now, I want it right now. No, let's just commit. Let's stop all this because, you know, I was still in the streets and stuff. And um, she was like, you know, she was the game changer for me. That's I got you. That's a blessing. I got married. Mm -hmm. Man. Who knows where, where life would have been? Man, I don't know if where I would be. I, I don't even that. see. I can always say I see I could have been in a worse situation. I don't know. I could have been in a good situation, the same situation, or a better situation. But I know I'm in a good situation, a great situation as of right now. I'm still alive. I'm still here. I got a family. You know, um, she's the you know the, the queen of my my castle. I'm the king of her castle, and uh, we good, man. We here for 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 death. We. We gonna be old people together. So she's my game changer, man. I owe her that. So six years since GTA, how has life changed for you since then? And have you seen a difference in the people that were around you before the game came out? Mm, yeah, I see the difference, and and life has changed for me, and it changed for the better. And you know, like I say, it was a gift and a curse. So people put so much money in my bank account that they wanted me to have so it changed my life drastically but sometimes in a curse way not in a good way because everybody just felt i had money just falling out of every drawer every cabinet every refrigerator every stove everything like you know they like man grant their father it did billions and this and that no i had a job man and i was blessed to have that job and it, it 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 changed my life to the fact that I got to I'm seeing the world because of this. You gotta remember, man, I'm in a hundred and I think it's 130, 120 some million people homes. So if that don't change your life, man, what do? What's next? Hmm. Do you have any other business ventures, anything that your fans can look forward to? Um, yeah, I'm I'm working on some right now, but it's a family thing, you know. Right now, I'm trying to just mellow down and just be a, a family-oriented person because I can't run the streets no more. You know, I can't hang out. The clubs ain't like they used to be. You can't just go in there and meet people and all this stuff. You got to go in there and be nervous and stuff. People standing on couches and partying. So I'm trying to do something that we have a family business. My my older daughter, she got um, a bakery. You know, Britt got the, the baby sweet tree. So I'm, I've been pushing to try to open that up for some years now, because she got a cold little clientele, and I know it can be a thousand times bigger once we open the bakery up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm, my, my focus is on that right now, trying to open up a, a business platform for the family. So while I'm able to do it, you know, because at some point you, you're not gonna be able to do it. So while I can, I better hurry up and do it, you know, try to figure out what's our retirement. Some so the family can have something to retire on, you know, and it's a lot of things I can do, but that right there is one of something that's hard. That's not me buying somebody franchise or buying somebody else's business. We have our own business, and it's a good business. Anybody that know about baby sweet treats from trap kitchen to taco mail to all y'all, man. Oh, my burger, y'all know Brittany ain't no joke. Baby sweet treats is fire. She serves some of the top clients, top entertainers celebrities out here and they swear to her stuff she just doing her stuff from out of the kitchen mm -hmm. so i'm gonna help get it out the kitchen to everybody's kitchen so that's what we're gonna you do. say is your greatest accomplishment in life so far my greatest accomplishment in life so far because you have many more great things to do i'm that's, sure yeah so that's a hard question but so far my biggest accomplishment is being a father and being a husband, you know, just being a, 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 a protector and a provider because that's one thing I do is I protect and I provide. So that's like a, a real great accomplishment. My, my biggest accomplishment was that I, 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 I made it through the odds. I've been shot, I've been stabbed, I've been to jail, I've been in trouble, I've been all kind of crazy stuff. And with them eyes of a guy growing up in Watts, and Watts, it's, it's, it's rare that we make it out without doing a lot of time or death. So my biggest accomplishment is that I, I made it to be where I'm at to this day, man, and get to see things that I saw when I was a kid that I never thought would come to like you know to existence, man. We seeing cars that drive themselves. 
I used to see that on the Jetsons. When I was a kid, I used to be like, wow, man, look, this car driving itself. You know, now we seeing it. Cell phones, I'm seeing it. We didn't have that. We didn't have TVs on the wall. We didn't have none of this stuff. Rings, security cameras, and all this stuff. So I'm seeing it. So that's my accomplishment, man, was being blessed enough to still be here to see it. What was your greatest life lesson? Um, To put God first. That's for sure, you know, and to, um, you know, be humble and be at a pace, you know, pace is everything. Take your time with whatever you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Don't rush. Um, Cause I rushed through a lot of things in my life when I was younger, I did a lot of rushing, a lot, trust me. And we do as younger people, you know, young adults, teenagers, we want to rush into everything. But when you get older, you know, you start understanding and appreciating patience and you know just being humble so my life lesson more than anything is just to be humble be thankful for the things that you do have not the things that you want you know what i'm saying so i'm always thankful for the things that i have you know i tend to stress out over things that i want or things that i want to do better but you gotta be just thankful man that you got life we had a really great interview there is one more question i want to ask if you could change anything in your life, what would it be and why? Um, I mean, I'm good. I'm okay, man. You know, if it, I, I would change nothing, 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 not zero, not nothing. My life is a, is a book. It's a story. And if you, you're willing to read it, you're going to enjoy it. So. If I changed it, then it wouldn't be an interesting story. Even though I've been through some, some tough stuff in my life, I, I take that as the lessons, man, because we always look at, you know, what do God got us here for? And that's what everybody always say, you know, I, I'm still here for a reason, man. I don't know what God got me here for. Well, guess what? Don't want to change nothing because God knows your direction. He's always driving all of us. You know, we his video game. So whether it's pain, suffering a little bit, we lose some people and stuff, man, it's, it's, it's in his will. It's not our will, you know? So I'm just here. I'm here, a video game, not just Franklin, I'm Sean, and I'm I'm his character. So whatever direction he's taking, he got the remote to me. So I'm, I'm good, how can I complain? Like I said, you know, I, I, I got wounds on me, I got holes on my body, I got stress. I don't got no hair. I got gray hairs, you know, I'm getting older, but it's, it's God's, you know, will, man, wisdom. So I'm good. I wouldn't change nothing. That's great. And that's a powerful answer. You know, in this family, we always keep God first. Yeah. And no matter whether it's good or bad, we're always thanking him. You know, we're thanking yeah. him for all he's done and all he's going to do. So on that mm -hmm. note, that concludes all the questions I have to ask. And I want to thank you again for doing this exclusive interview just for me to have and you know i love you and i want to thank you again so much love you too baby girl all right all right and you ain't gotta like it cause the hood don't love it You ain't gotta like it cause the hood don't love it Watch a young nigga show his ass I'm puppy I got the whole block bumping You ain't gotta like it cause the hood don't love it You ain't gotta like it cause the hood don't love it